Next we have uh, Dr. Lisa Heito Wiederman. Dr. Heito Wiederman is an associate professor in the Institute for Global Health and Infectious Disease at UNC Chapel Hill. Um, she is, her research interests include primary and secondary HIV prevention interventions for gay, bisexual, non-identifying men using both the internet or other technologies, adolescents, acute HIV inf infection, and linkage and retention in care for young men of color. Her talk today will be putting HIV care and prevention in, the po in their pockets, M-Health for young men who have sex with men. Welcome, Dr. Hightown Meader. Great, right. thank you all. So um, I am excited to, to present this. I'm from the other, other school across, across the way, but if you notice, I did wear my Duke blue today. So thank you. So, I so I, at least part of the talk will be appreciated. Um, so I'm going to talk about three projects that um, I'm working on with a lot of collaborators um, in both at both Duke, UNC, and then in the technology field. And my research is focused on young men who have sex with men, um, because that really is sort of where the HIV epidemic is. So again, I'm an HIV researcher. In, in the US, um, about two thirds of all new HIV infections are in young men who have sex with men. So it's, it's a big issue. Um, and it's the only real risk group where we're seeing an increasing HIV incidence. Um, and if, again, if you look at the group 13 to 24, you really see a large increase over the last few years. After diagnosis um, of HIV, there's also a disparity in terms of who gets into care gets on treatment and gets virologically suppressed, which is really the end game for treating HIV. To end the epidemic, we need everybody tested, everybody in care, and everybody on therapy. So why technology interventions? Again, this, I, I cut these slides short because I figured you, you guys get it, um, and so, or else you wouldn't be here. But really, when we're focused on the population that I'm working with, that really is where they get their information. It's what they're doing in their free time. Um, they're, you know, they're really attached to their phones, to the internet. 83% um, of young adults own a smartphone, and, and that's higher among gay and bisexual men, and it's higher among men of color. Um, in addition, you know, HIV, you know, we're still in the South, but, but really, you know, uh, across the, the nation, there still is stigma around HIV um, prevention, testing, and treatment. And so when you talk about designing and engaging youth, particularly in interventions, things that get rid of some of those structural barriers to care um, and, and engaging with, um, with treatment can have um, remarkable um, improvements in getting these youth engaged. So I'll talk a little bit about health empowerment. Health empowerment started about 11 years ago. So at that time, it wasn't M Health; it was actually E Health. Um, and so we weren't really designing things for the mobile. We were designing things for sort of the internet-based computers. And um, I guess that sort of shows my age. Um, I was getting ready this morning, and my daughter saw these white hairs, which was exciting because she says I look like Elsa now, which is um, <laughs> it's, a, it's a little frightening. Um, but um, she wanted to collect them. Um, <laughs> so, um, but we really started this project. It started as a developmental grant for me about 10, 12 years ago when we noticed increased cases of HIV in young black MSM in the triangle. Over the years, it's gone from a, a developmental grant to an R01. Um, not, you know, this is my, just by the nick of my, my hair, it got, it got in. But we've been able to take what we designed as initially a, a desktop sort of web-based intervention that was really um, uh, feeding information to participants and turn it into a mobile phone optimized social networking kind of a 2.0 intervention. And we've done all of that with the goals of really building community networks. As the sort of internet field and the social networking field has changed, we've had to adapt our intervention iteratively to meet the young men where they are. Because just a standalone desktop intervention is not engaging. Um, and we had to kind of keep up with the technology. So again, our goals are to build a lot of community support around shared experiences. Again, young black men who have sex with men may not engage with other young black men who have sex with men in productive and healthy relationships. And we wanted to facilitate some of that. Again, there's a lot of data and research um, that shows that there's social isolation, depression, um, uh, homophobia, stigma. And so the idea to build something where, where we could address that in an anonymous and um, um, open way was um, important. Over time, we also, again, sort of with the field, began to incorporate other features into our interventions, such as gamification, ways to continue to um, engage the users. We've done a lot of, of, of development, um, pilot trials, focus groups, 
usability testing, and we're now in the process of our statewide randomized controlled trial. So this is the home page of Health Empowerment. This is what it looks like on a, on a, um, a desktop or an a, 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 a iPad. It's built with responsive design, so again, no matter what device you're using, it always kind of um, will adjust. Our highlight, our features, is our community section. Again, that's our social networking feature where users can engage, and I'll go through some of the, the posts um, or, or some of the features. Empower yourself. This is an article section. So again, we still wanted to impart knowledge and information as part of our sort of theory of behavior change. Information is nece a necessity, but not the only thing that is required or that, that, that stimulates behavior change. So we have, in addition, what we heard from the men was that please stop telling us only about HIV. We are more than HIV. We are more than sex. And so provide us with information to have healthy, holistic lives. And so we've done that in the Empower Yourself section. Again, tools for health, a lot of interactive features to gauge risk, to um, uh, uh, um, uh, talk, uh, think about situations, um, and um, to uh, do some goal setting. Testing and care resources so that, again, you know, eliminating some of the, any of the structural uh, barriers to getting into care or testing. Our getting real section is kind of like our, almost like our Facebook to some extent, where you can post videos or um, uh, um, audio, um, really anything, and, and can um, like or comment on others. And then our forum, which is our most popular feature. Again, it's just sort of uh, an online kind of discussion board, but it's, again, led by and um, uh, facilitated by the users themselves. So while we moderate it to make sure that there's not any disparaging or, or uh, offensive comments that would offend others in the site, we don't moderate it for the content. We let them really go and talk about whatever they, they want. And again, you can see that, that things have been um, really, you know, a, a lot of posts, but you know, things from manscaping, which we can talk about. I, I won't ask anyone to raise their hand. Um, but um, and, you know, a lot of topics that have gotten a lot of interest um, on really interesting kind of healthy sexual topics that these young guys may not have space to talk about in other places. And, and I should say, of note, we've only had to, to take down one comment over the, the year or so that we've been going. Um, and it, it was, it was um, uh, you know, really just sort of a couple words that we thought were, we, that, the, that should be reframed so that we didn't, that weren't offensive. This is um, our Ask Dr. W, so it's, a, it's myself, I'm an HIV doctor, so the, the young men can ask me questions and I respond about, really, they can ask me anything. Um, and then here's some of our gamification features. So we have a quiz section. Again, the more they're on the site, their, their reputation increases, they get points, they can use those points to buy items in our store. Um, again, our four-week field trial prior to the randomized control trial was a small number, only 15 guys, but interestingly, we did see significant improvements in social support, social isolation, and depression, even with this small sample size. So we're hopeful, optimistic, um, that the um, randomized control trial will um, uh, uh, show some positive changes. So again, we've shown that there's a high acceptability of, of this intervention and some uh, preliminary trends towards outcomes. We're in the midst, again, of our RCT. We're, we're pretty much on target. We've enrolled about 70%. Uh, they use the intervention for three months, and then we follow them at six and 12 months. Um, they're actually allowed to use it, continue to use it up to 12 months, so we can see kind of in the real world when they're not um, being told that they have to sort of participate in the intervention if they still want to use the site. The next intervention I'll talk about is Epic Allies. So this is a collaboration with um, the Cactus Group. Um, they're here in Durham, and they uh, develop smart web apps, I think is a, that's their slogan. Um, and so this started as a small business grant phase one, um, and then uh, we did some preliminary testing, and we've moved into a small business grant phase two. Um, and so Epic Allies is really a adherence app. So after, again, after diagnosis, many young men don't enter care. And those that enter care don't start medicines. And those that start medicines may not optimally adhere to their medicines. And that, again, is critical. So Epic Allies is, again, a theory-based mobile phone app utilizing gaming mechanics and social networking to engage young people, particularly young MSM, to get on meds and take their meds. And again, why? Again, adherence is a big issue, um, and there aren't any effective adherence interventions for HIV-infected young men who have sex with men, despite being the largest portion of the epidemic and the one that's growing. So we need effective interventions. 
So here's, um, again, these are some of our preliminary, um, uh, in continue to be in development. Um, so I thank the developers for letting me use these. But it's built around a story, right? So it, it's an app. Um, there's a, a toxic waste accident. There's havoc in the town of uh, city of Metopolis. Some cities, some citizens have superhuman abilities. And the only way to keep these toxins at bay is to take the medicines and to work with their other um, allies, otherwise known as their epic allies. Here's our map of our city. So again, very, in, in our usability testing and our preliminary focus groups, the youth wanted, you know, again, something colorful. They wanted, we showed them, I don't remember how many different types of scenes and avatars and colors, and they really were gravitating towards kind of that superhero theme. And so this is kind of what we went with, all right? This is our epic allies. So again, there's interactions between players. This is anonymous, so you have an avatar. So you don't have to give your true self up, but you can still give and send encouragement to your allies who are also on the app to take their meds. Um, you can give them, uh, if they've done a good job, you can send them a kudo. And then you can challenge them to do better. So you can challenge them to improve on their adherence or challenge them to track other things. Reminders have been shown um, text space in, in terms of, of adherence. Um, uh, texting and receiving at least a one weekly text has been shown to increase adherence. So we wanted to include a medication reminder system. So again, the young men can set their own reminders of how to get it. They can customize what they want the notification to be saying. So it's not going to say, take your HIV medicines that pops up on the phone. When they log in, they do a daily survey, again, a way to track sort of what they're doing. And again, to make it more interactive, not only to track their adherence, but to track other behaviors that we know are tied to whether they take their medicine. So young men that, that use alcohol or drugs or, um, or, or um, uh, have uh, depression are less likely to engage in, uh, in positive adherence behaviors. So perhaps tracking that and being able to have them visually see how their adherence and their other behaviors are linked can facilitate improved adherence. Here's our profile. Again, you can see they level up, um, ways to keep them engaged. So the more that they uh, participate in the app, the more they um, uh, uh, are, are engaged with other users. Their medals, their tokens go up. There's a daily, again, remember the information piece. So there's a daily dose, which is our newspaper. So every time they log in, we've created a, um, a, a, a six-month adherence curriculum um, that includes articles, that includes quizzes, that includes testimonials, it includes an Ask the Dr. W kind of feature, and Ask the Social Worker feature. It includes uh, what we've created as sort of um, uh, diary entries for three young men who are starting, um, who are on the journey of, of being diagnosed and on medicines. Every day there's a new article. The more that they log in, they can, um, again, either take the quiz and they get tokens for, for reading it. Why, why do they get these tokens? Well, again, the, you know, part of, of engaging youth in an intervention is making them engage in the intervention. And so this is our mini game section that we're working on. So um, our team is developing three to four mini games that what, as they get their tokens for engaging with the app, they can play these mini games. Next steps, they're in the final round. I, I may have got this wrong, a beta test. There's lots of alphas and betas and gamma testing and whatnot, but um, they tell me that we're on track and I believe them. Um, and so what's, what's exciting about Epic Allies is that we'll be testing this within the Adolescent Trials Network for HIE Interventions. So it's 14 sites around the country that see adolescents. Um, and so our, our, our randomized controlled trial has the support of the at ATN, which I'm a member of, to really test this app in a, um, in a way that I think will get some meaningful uh, 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 data. Our final uh, project is called Tough Talks. Um, again, after diagnosis, HIV um, uh, positive young men continue to have sex. Um, and they continue to um, engage in, in, in behaviors that could put others at risk for transmission. So disclosure of status, so talking to your partner about testing, provides opportunities to engage in safer sex behaviors. It allows that partner the opportunity to think about other behaviors that might help them be protected, such as pre-exposure prophylaxis. And it's also been shown to decrease risky behaviors. However, again, there's no um, uh, effective disclosure intervention targeted for young MSM. 
So what we're working with is a company called Virtually Better that has done a lot of work there in Atlanta. They've done a lot of work with the military um, in designing uh, virtual reality scenarios to uh, deal with post-traumatic stress as well as fear of flying. And we're working on, um, again, this is a small, another small business grant. This is a phase one, but a disclosure scenario um, where uh, our, our young men will disclose to an avatar in a realistic context and get to practice disclosing their status and see different responses. So that's sort of one of our avatars. Uh, here's another one. It's wrapped in an intervention that, again, provides coaching and information and motivation for these youth to, youth to continue to engage in these behaviors. So again, things that pop up of sort of, you know, here's some things to think about when you're disclosing your status. The ultimate goal is to wrap it into a larger intervention for those that are uh, HIV positive youth. Um, I, I'm a Wizard of Oz fan. I was Dorothy in first grade, probably TMI for y'all, but um, I, I got married in ruby slippers. Um, but um, so I've always wanted to have do something with the Wizard of Oz, and now I have my own grant that does it. So, um, and I say it all the time. So um, the Wizard of Oz is basically the sort of the controlling piece of of the um, of the intervention, in that when the patient sort of comes in and sits down, or the the client, they we they will pick go through their scenario, and they will again sort of initially type their conversation with the avatar, um, and then we respond um, and, and provide feedback. The ultimate goal of this is to, we're partnering with a company at UCSD, um, that, or a group at UCSD that does natural language processing. So we'll be starting in, in the end of phase one to be training this sort of wizard to actually respond um, uh, by using natural language. So we have a fully functional prototype one. We're, we're going to get ready to do some usability testing with the clinician using the Wizard of Oz. Then we'll be working with this company to, again, sort of train this natural language processing, making sure that we have all the responses that make sense. Then we'll develop a, a, a photo of prototype two, do a small acceptability evaluation. This is, again, a two-year grant. And then hopefully move on to phase two. So some challenges in my last couple minutes, you know, again, I think I've learned a lot about my goals and my sort of, um, you know, as a researcher, as a clinician of kind of what I think should be done and how it should be done. And then we partner with, you know, technology companies and they have a different business model. And I think we've learned a lot as we've both, they'll, they'll probably stand up and, and shout, yes, we have. Um, but we've learned a lot, I think, about how each other's processes work and what's, and, and, and timelines. You know, research funding through the NIH is very different than, you know, private, you know, I'll say private practice, but so the, the real world of, of, of development. And so I think, you know, of learning a lot of kind of that, that model in addition, you know, the, the research field, you write a grant um, and you, you, know, you slave away at this grant and then you submit it and then you know, it, if you're lucky, it doesn't get completely shredded by study section such that you can then resubmit it maybe one, two times. But now you're, you know, you're two years down the line and the research field has changed and your reviewers say, well, this is not you know, relevant or how are you going to adapt? So really, you know, kind of aligning your research with the, the, the model of funding, and I think that can be challenging. Some of the things we've done is, is, is trying to diversify, so not only R01s, the traditional grant line funding, but going to the small business grants, um, you know, working with um, um, other places um, to, to, to look for grant funding um, has been something that we've, again, tried to, to continue to do. Um, and I think, you know, finally, sort of one of the major challenges is really sort of this user engagement. You know, again, all of us, you know, likely in this room have, have smartphones. All of us have downloaded probably a million apps, and there's probably much, much less of those on our phones and much, much less of those that we use on a daily basis. And so how do we maintain user engagement? How long is long enough for some of the behaviors we're trying to, to, to create um, and make habit? Um, and, and again, how do you continue to engage this population, particularly in a world where they're often online to find sex partners, there's a lot of sex seeking sites they're on, or they're on Facebook where you know, there's something new every second. If you have a lot of friends, mine probably every few minutes or hours, I'm not that, I don't have a lot of friends. Um, but you know, how do you kind of compete in this, in this world? So again, I think that's really important. Again, this is, um, you know, I, I'm, I'm uh, 
I don't have as many systems as, as the others, but my system is all of these people that have really, um, that I work you know, collaboratively with and I'm so um, honored to work with. The Cactus Group, who again has really been uh, helping with Epic Allies and um, in, a, in a really, um, I, I think, a collaborative way. I think we've, we've really made a lot of progress. Health Empowerment, which was initially developed by the Chai Corps at UNC. My main and, and primary partner, I say in life, but that makes us sound married, which, um, but, uh, and this is being recorded, so I don't know where it's being put up, but, uh, but Sarah Legrand, who is at Duke, um, who really is kind of my right-hand um, woman on all of these projects, um, and then our, our, our collaborators at Virtually Better um, as well. So um, I think I have a couple minutes for questions. But. The phase two? Yes. So how, how, can you speak a little bit about the evaluation and how broad it will be? Sure. So, um, so it is a randomized controlled trial, so we'll be enrolling 300 youths, 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 I sound like that guy from uh, Joe Pesci, youths, youths, um, 300 young MSM from 14 sites at the Adolescent Trials Network. Um, they'll be randomized to e either receiving Epic Allies as it stands, or an app that it looks and feels like Epic Allies, but it'll just consist of a weekly article um, in the Daily Dose around health or um, um, exercise wellness. I mean, again, and we chose that control as an option because of the fact that weekly text messages have been shown to improve adherence, and that's sort of the adherence standard of care from a technology perspective. They will um, use the app for six months, um, and then we will um, evaluate it at outcomes at, at, we're doing surveys at baseline, three months, six months, in addition at six months a subset will have qualitative exit interviews, and then at 12 months. Well, I'm pretty sure I'm going to be rich, just so you know. So if you want to get in now, I can, you know, I'm pretty sure I'm going to be pretty wealthy soon. Um, you know, again, I think, you know, as we wrote the commercialization plan, um, you know, that was sort of the question that we asked. And I think that, you know, what's, when you look at the, the, the medication adherence field out there, um, there actually is a lot of um, uh, desire for this within sort of health um, you know, HMOs and, and insurance plans, as well as, you know, within sort of the HIV community, HRSA, CDC, you know, would like to have a disseminatable evidence-based interventions to improve adherence, um, both for HIV but other chronic diseases. And so what we've done, and again, and you can kind of, if you sort of look at it, is there's nothing really HIV other than the daily dose about the app. And so the idea was that this would be a product that could be sort of easily translatable to other chronic diseases, making it more um, commercializable, if that's a word. Um, and that's sort of where we're, we're sort of we're, we're, we're banking on it. In addition to um, uh, drug companies, they have developed their own apps. Um, Janssen, who's an HIV company, has a Care for Today app, which, is anybody here from Janssen? Okay. It's okay. Uh, <laughs> um, you know, it, it, it tracks, you know, the, all of the ones that are available, they track medicines. And if that's what you're aiming to do, then there are a lot of great apps that track medicine adherence and that, you know, have a lot of bells and whistles of showing the pill and, and things like that. What we've decided to do was take a different approach and say that it's not just the tracking, it's the engagement and it's the fun and it's the social support and it's that piece. And there's nothing out there quite like this that does it. Thank you. Um, I have a question. On the national language processing, are yeah. you using text-based entry or voice? Uh, well, initially, we're starting with the text base, and the goal will then be to move to voice. Move to voice, yeah. So I think, again, this is exciting. And when you, again, you think about lots of users, you're bringing in yeah. lots of information, and then what you extract not only over time for that particular user or class of users, but what you can infer from a broader group. And that's really exciting. Another dimension of this is quite an exciting part. This gets into them telling the story about, mm -hmm. about things and getting more language. It, 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 
Yeah, I think, you know, this again, this is being funded as a phase one, so the natural languaging piece is kind of is, is at the end. But the hope, again, would be that it would move to a phase two where we'd really expand that, expand the scenarios. And again, just like with the Epic Allies, Tough Talks, again, is you can see the idea is that it could facilitate all kinds of difficult conversations. You know, for young MSM coming out to a provider or to a parent, telling somebody that they have cancer, telling someone that their child has autism. You know, how to sort of, how do you, you know, teach medical students to have these end of life conversations? You know, again, there's nothing, it, it, creating the dialogue is easy once you have the shell of kind of the technology. And that's kind of the hope for moving forward and making me rich, clearly. End game. Thank you, very much. Thank you so much. <laughs>